Hello, hello, hello! You are tuning in to another episode of The Wonderkin Show. Today's topic, y'all know what we talking about. Lamar and OBJ! So, last night, after OBJ, uh, the news had dropped about him joining the Baltimore Ravens, um, and, you know, it going absolutely viral, Lamar screenshotted him and OBJ FaceTiming together. And then it went live with them together at a Baltimore club saying, welcome to both of them. Look, 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 look. This can be what we need to sway. Lamar Jackson back. To the right way. <laughs> look, 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 look. All right, so here's the thing. I already told y'all, I understand his frustration with this team. I hope he stays, though. I just want the Ravens to give him his money. It shouldn't be that hard, right? You see how when you really want to play, how you can manipulate the cap? Are y'all seeing it? And now... We got, a, we got another wide receiver who, if teams with Bateman can make a dynamic duo. Absolute dynamic. So the question really is, is this enough to sway Lamar? Is it? All we could do is hope. Because if it is, then great. If it's not, oh my God. Oh, I'm trying to keep Here's the thing. I'm trying to keep as open mind as possible, right? Because we all want what's best for this team. We just seem to have different ways of going about thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like some people just believe no matter what, what the front office and them do, they know better than us, whatever. You know, even though they've admitted that they were wrong multiple times and that they've made, you know, certain stuff to fix their mistakes, this being one of them with the wide receiver room. But, you know, I mean, I got to be happy, right? I'm happy. I'm happy that they're actually alive, that they're absolutely awake, that they're not a dead fish stinking up the joints. What would it take? Look, even if y'all don't want to do a super long contract with Lamar, 152, three years, 153 for two years, I think it would keep him. It would have a nice elongated window to win multiple Super Bowls and you would be able to surround him with the adequate talent of a quarterback of his ilk. So this is why this is why I'm saying, bro, we need all the help we can get. All of it. And it looks like Lamar likes what he's seeing. And oh, another thing, Bashadi was in on the Odell getting. When have you heard Bashadi in on anything? Anything. Didn't he say he just watches from the sidelines and lets Eric and let uh, EDC do everything themselves? Look, man, I think, look, I think what happened, and I'm going to be real with you. Let me let me just paraphrase with this. I think what happened is um, even the other day they came out and said, oh, we took a poll and the, you know, the fans agree with us. No. I think they saw the discourse. I think they saw the writing on the mirror saying like, look, there's going to be a supreme drop off if there's not some changes made. So Bashadi being a businessman and not wanting to, you know, lose money because if they're not making money in a billionaire's minds, they're losing money, especially with a recession upcoming. Yes, with a recession on the way, they're trying to make every dollar that they can. And that's not a way to make dollars if you don't have a quarterback and you have no good receivers in the receiving room. It just is what it is. But now that you have, and look, I know I'm wishing on a star, but to have Bateman and OBJ on the outside for Lamar, when you have Likely and you have Mark Andrews that could dominate the slot and tight end positions, you might have something. <laughs> You might have something great. And that's not including J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards. 
we got to listen. I'm, I'm at a point now where I just want this to get done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want it to get done. It shouldn't be that hard to get it done. I'm just hoping that they get out of their way, say, look, we need Lamar, and they do what it takes to, to lock him down. Because it's looking like more and more when I watch it, it's looking like Lamar wants to be here. He just wants his money. He just wants his money. And can you blame that man for wanting his money? No, you can't. And you know what I saw on Twitter? What was kind of irking me? Like, irking me deeply. Like, you had some Raven fans like, oh, look, the front office doing their magic. Oh, yeah. Where's all you haters now? <laughs> Stuff like that kind of teased me off. You know why it teased me off? Because they act like these players weren't being injured by the coaching staff. They act like they didn't employ a high school offensive coordinator. They act like they didn't act dismissive of an entire, you know, player's room being the wide receiver. And they act like they failed to surround Lamar with a good O-line for a bulk of the time he's been here. And all of a sudden now that OBJ comes, it should just alleviate all of everything that we've said towards them. Oh. No, it should not. We're looking at it saying about time you make some progress. About time you make some movement. What you think? What you think? Just because you get one B or one A, we should just not look at the rest of the report card? I'm looking at the entire thing in its entirety. One A is a step in the right direction. But guess what? A report card is more than just one letter grade. It's multiple of them. And you have to do it consistently. Because you get four of them for the year. Look, I'm happy with this move. I really think it's a move to help solidify not only the receiving core, but to try to persuade Lamar to stay. And look, I'll keep saying this. I want what's best for Lamar. I really do. I really do. And I think that in this instance, this, you know, this could alter or change a lot what's going on with the Ravens. Because here's the thing. If the Ravens also get a stud, a young stud, from the draft with OBJ, with Bateman, then you got something special. You have Lamar can go to work. That's not saying he might have the best of the best, but he has ammo at least and not going up to a gunfight with a knife. You get where I'm coming from? He can actually fight back. And that's the part that us fans should want. If you got a QB who's young and who's talented, immensely talented, you want to give them every single iota advantage that they can receive. Why? Because once they get it, they, it can maximize their potential. <laughs> Not just accepting them on face value. You understand? Look, Lamar is a one of one. I want to remind everybody, you know, that will watch this and say, oh, we'll be okay if, even if he's not there. I want to remind you, even with the weapons being hurt, being not used properly, being devoid, outside threats, all those things. Lamar Jackson is the second highest scoring QB in the league. The only other QB that is higher than them, think about this, is Patrick Mahomes. That's a Patrick Mahomes with the greatest offensive mind that the league has ever seen, the greatest receiving tight end that the league has ever seen, and also one of the top three best deep threats the league has ever seen. That's, what, that's the only person that's over me. It's only over my, I think, like a half a point or a point. That alone should tell you what type of player he is. What he forces teams to do. 
if Lamar Jackson is throwing that rock on either side, on the outside, you got to play man. You got to play man. And I don't think a team will feel comfortable playing man coverage on Bateman and OBJ an entire game because one of them are going to break multiple of them open. That means if that if that corner misses, it's off to the races. And guess what? Bateman can fly. Bateman can fly. OBJ got wheels. So that so that little oh 10 10 yard 10 yard out turned into a quick 30 40 yard play. But it all rests at the foot if if they can get Lamar to come back. And it's looking like he likes what the Ravens are doing. This is called building back the bridge that you knew. <laughs> Laying down a foundation. Building, you know what I'm saying? Putting down the cement and the and the and the military grade uh uh structure. All those things. That's what it takes. This should be nothing new. But if Lamar Jackson is not re up, then it's all for naught. I don't care who they get. They can have DeAndre Hopkins back there. If Lamar is gone, it's all for naught. All of it. So it's in the Ravens' best interest to get it done. Get it done. Congratulations. You got a weapon. Congratulations. You got some of the icing on the cake. But what is icing without a cake? Lamar Jackson is the cake. He's the layering of the cake. He looked, listen, even the picture of him being in the club, he looks so serious. I hope, listen, I made a video the other day and it was pretty much saying how I think Lamar has to be on his P's and Q's watching, being careful of women, being careful of the people around you. Hopefully that's what that the reason why he was like that in the videos because of that I'm praying to God because like I've said before in other videos at this time because of what he is and what the media is trying to paint him as any slip up they, they'll come after they'll come after him his character they'll try to burn anything that he's doing to the ground and I would hate for that to happen to somebody like a Lamar Jackson someone as genuine and as talented as a Lamar Jackson. That's why I said that in the video. So it could be him just watching his surroundings, being very careful, seeing what's going on. Or it could still be a level of frustration. Frustration that they went out and spent 15 mil on Odell, which is half of what he'll make, and they still haven't given him the contract that he wants. But, but they're quick to nickel and diamond for every penny. That he deservedly has earned. So that's where I'm at with this. But hopefully everything gets worked out. Hopefully this is the first walk in the right direction. And hopefully Lamar Jackson gets signed next. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And that's another episode of the Wonder Kid Show. <laughs> hey, yo, look, this is so crazy. We are almost at 2,100 subscribers. Thank you all for supporting and watching, man. We are getting to these numbers. You know, right now, even though we celebrated the 2,000 mark, 10,000 is where we are aimed. So we're going to keep working. And after 10,000, then we're going to be aiming for 100,000. But um, nonetheless, I'm happy with the progress. Thank you for watching. Once again, you can be anywhere else in the world, but you hear me. You know I appreciate that. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. You know I love commenting with you guys. Just be cordial and respectful to people's differing opinions in the comments, and we got no problems. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a QR code, and that's to a cash app. The cash app is for all donations, Wonderkin related. So if you want to help this platform grow monetarily, right, see new things and all that stuff, that's how you do it. That's how you make the donations. You can also find the cash app in the description of this video. Money sign, The Wonderkin Show. 
right? And also you can find in the description is the Wonderton Show's brand new Patreon, which is now up and running. And the guess what's up and running within the Patreon? The Team Wonderkin Discord. That's also up. So go out there, support, get into the Patreon, and let's talk this mess in the Discord. So once again, this is the Wonderkin Show. This is your host, Nitro, signing off. And as always, you guys knows my slogan. Peace. And I am out of here. Yo! <laughs>